Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and I'm here to hopefully sort out some cable confusion a few people may have. You may even be seeing this as a reply to some of the comments I see on, well, anytime I've done videos about cable because the whatabouts kick in and the what about Cat 6, Cat 6A, Cat 7, Cat 8, direct attached copper with SFP. I want to talk about where we use these different cable types, different connections between switches or between servers or around the office. And this is going to be a general guideline for their use. There's always an exception because as so many things in technology, when you ask the question of when do we use this? Well, it depends, but those factors, and there's some things you can generalize about those factors to kind of determine generally where cables go where. And of course, I know there's always going to be an exception and that's fine. But as long as you know which cables are which, you know when to use those exceptions. And I'll be leaving a link to some blog articles and just talking about, you know, how to plug things in and where these all go. Before we dive into the details, if you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to Lawrence systems.com. If you'd like to hire us for a project such as network consulting, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel, including the shirts and swag in case you like shirts with cats on it. Matter of fact, we have this shirt that has six cats on it. And if you didn't notice, their tails represent the different colors of uh, some of the cables for the category five, six, seven, and eight cabling. All right. Now, I also want to shout out to fs.com for sending me some of these cables this is where we got like these dat cables which actually this one's a 25 gig cable and this fiber uh they sent these to me along with some modules because i have some reviews i'm doing but this is also part of that review process which does include as well the switch i have sitting right here so this is a unify aggregation switch and i will be doing a review in the future and if that Future has already occurred, and I will go back and edit this video, put a link down below to that review. But I've also reviewed this MicroTik and this other Unify switch here. Uh, these are just for reference. This is not specifically about them, but questions do come up about those switches and about these cables and about the connectors. So I figured they made good props. Now, where do we use what is going to depend on how far away things are is one of the factors and the next one is of course what speed do you need and of course the most speed would be the easy answer but then that also means the most budget so there's a happy middle that always has to be met first is connecting switches with DAC cable matter of fact switches and servers that are all located for example within the rack like i have behind me in our lab rack right here this is all has a series of 10 and 25 gig connectors in there and those are best facilitated with SFP using DAC. DAC is a cable that is really simple, really easy to use. You just plug these DAC cables in, they come pre terminated with these type of ends on there. They're not something you custom fabricate, but DAC has a really good advantage. SFP in general has an advantage of being very low latency, very low power, especially these direct attached copper. The downside is, of course, you're not running this 200 feet away because, well, it doesn't go 200 feet. They do make some active ones that go further, but generally when you're within the rack or within the server room, this is where the DAC cables are great. And especially if you are connecting with some of the cards, for example, this is a 25 gig card right here, and you can see it has a relatively small heatsink, despite having two 25 gig ports on here. And this is an even older 10 gig card. And these are really affordable. So if you're building out your home lab or getting started in this, these are common. But I think the question that comes up, people assume that, oh, I should be able to just grab an inexpensive RG45 type connector. But that's usually not the case because the RG45 is substantially more wattage substantially more it, yes it's all a small amount of wattage but that is compounded over the number of connections you have so it generates more heat requires more wattage therefore can be a little bit more expensive and back to latency intensive applications such as a storage server so if you're connecting like a virtualization system to a storage server you want the lowest latency possible and uh, yeah that comes back to using sfp with like a dac cable here now what about fiber isn't fiber faster well that's still in the same category as SFP because you're going to use an SFP module connector and fiber is generally speaking really low wattage not much more not substantially more I should say than using a DAC cable uh, fiber is more though not for use inside of here you can it will work but it's more for when the switches are further away 
And that's where I'll reference this article from FS.com, RG45 versus SFP, which should be used to connect two switches. And this article is January 17th, 2020. I bring the date up because it is currently August of 2021, because with technology, when you're referencing what should be used where, the date matters a lot as technology changes fast. But they break down the use cases, and really it comes down to this right here when it comes to max distance. When you're building, and for example, we do a lot of infrastructure for building in warehouses. And when you talk about building in a very large scale warehouse, you may have 400,000 square foot warehouse and you have the front office and maybe they have some servers and office space up there. And then they have the shipping office at the furthest corner of the building. In those cases, the distance is going to make a big deal and fiber makes a lot of sense. And for example, the multi-mode fiber that I have in my hand right here has no problem at 550 meters. If we were going to use RJ45 Ethernet cable, 100 meters. Now, I know I've done reviews on like Game Changer cable, and I'll leave a link to that below. And Game Changer cable is able to break that 100 meter limit. But generally speaking, you'll want to run fiber for a couple reasons. One, it only goes so much further than the 100 meter distance. And if you have to certify a cable with a cable certifier, it is only certified to work at that distance. Second is any type of copper-based RJ45 Ethernet cable will also be subject to electromagnetic interference, especially in the manufacturing area where you have lots of machines that may give this off. That can cause or pose a problem over distance because all the different electromagnetic interference that it picks up along the way from point A to point B causes an issue. You don't have this issue with fiber. It's fiber optic. Now, 550 meters for multi-mode fiber and 150 kilometers for single-mode fiber means one of those two options is going to get you the distance. Generally speaking, you need to get connect either like a scenario I played out with the warehouse or if you have a large facility with multiple buildings and you know you run an underground fiber between the parking lot. Site to site is great from building to building, but a lot of times if, if you're in the construction phase and you're able to do either directional boring underground, uh, we will have a fiber pole that goes between the buildings. Uh, we worked with a client to do this, for example, where they had six buildings on a property and they wanted really fast connections. So fiber was run underground between each of the buildings and brought to the main distribution. Now, MDF or IDF, main distribution frame, where their server room is essentially, you know, where all the equipment may be. This is why you have these switches like the unified aggregation switch like I have right here. You would then put fiber modules in here and this has lots of SFP ports that you're able to pop those in and be able to, all right, put all these together and uh, then spider it all out to all the switches creating, you know, your hub spoke type of topology, or sometimes you could create some different topologies outside of that. Once again, there's always an exception or why you may want to do that for redundancy where you have the buildings connected to each other as well as to a central server. So if one link goes down or some unfortunate parking lot event occurs that destroys it because that does happen when construction people don't check for what's there before they start digging, um, you can have redundant links, but that get too far off topic. The advantages of SFP are kind of obvious. They're fast, they're low latency, but of course, running this 10 gig right here in this micro tick switch, which I reviewed is still a great budget switch for people starting out and that want those connections. This is why there's so many different SFP options, but you're probably thinking, all right, but my computer, my office is too far away to run DAC. And maybe we'll just run fiber everywhere because, you know, fiber is great. And this question seems to come up a lot. And it's just not practical to run fiber to every workstation and run this all through into everywhere. That's, of course, why we have this right here. I'm not saying fiber is, you know, impossibly hard to terminate. It's just not as simple as running a cable. But this is where the cabling comes in, and we're going to talk about which cable you should use. So I'm holding some CAT 6A, and then I'm holding right now some CAT 6. And this is where there's always confusion of CAT 6, CAT 6A, and then CAT 7 and CAT 8. I, For those of you that want to go way into the deep in the weeds, me and Dan Barrera did a great video where we talk really in depth about cabling standards. I'll leave a link to below. But let's just talk about the practical where we are here in August of 2021 about what cable we deploy for building out a office network. And the first piece to start with is another article, thanks at fs.com, running 10G base T over CAT6, CAT6A, six, six, CAT7, and we can throw CAT8 in there. Uh, this was in January of 2017, so I don't think they had CAT8 ratified then. But CAT6 supports 100 base TX, 100 base T, 10G base T, your 10 gig standards for frequencies up to 250 megahertz, and it can handle 10 gigs in conditions of throughput with utmost length of 55 meters. I want to highlight that because there's 
this constant comment and misinformation that people seem to have that Cat 6 is only capable of doing one gig. No, Cat 5 E is capable of doing the one gig connections, no problem. And of course, you can go a little out of spec. And yes, you can probably squeeze, not certifiable, but squeeze some 10 gig into short runs of Cat 5e if it's a good quality cable. But as far as what actually is documented in the standard, you can do 10 gigs with Cat 6 up to 55 meters. And if all the computers that also have to connect at 10 gig are less than 55 meters away, it's fine to run it. Now, you're not future proofing if you're building it all in with cat six right now cat six a would probably be a little bit better future proofing but it's still pretty common and we'll get to the why in a second mostly it's price but then we have cat six a now cat six a is 10 gig over copper but it can do the entire hundred meters i wanted to point that out because there is that kind of myth like i said before one that you only can do the 10 gig with this second is yes you can run poe over both of these they didn't mention an article but that seems to be a question people come up with oh i have a poe application in you know the poe switch maybe only two meters away or three meters away from where the for example a wi-fi access point or whatever poe device that happens to also need 10 gig pretty much wi-fi access points are a popular use case for that and yeah you can definitely run with standard cat 6 poe over that i don't know where that misinformation comes from but if you read the standards that is supported and of course it's supported over cat 6a and these are some of the differences right here when you start looking at the cat 6 or cat 6a you do get better shielding this is what allows cat 6a to go that greater distance and carry the full 10 gig um, but then what about cat 7 shouldn't i just future proof my building with cat 7 or cat 8 let's talk about that now now, this is not an endorsement specifically of Monoprice. Uh, they had nothing to do with this video. I just thought, hey, why not use one place to compare a little bit of pricing? Prices may vary, but at least from one source, you can kind of get the price variations you'll see in these cables. So here's your 1,000-foot box of Cat6 Ethernet bulk cable. Cat6 Ethernet cable is relatively easy to work with, and Monoprice is $125 for a box of 1,000-foot. What about Cat6A? Well, 1,000-foot costs... To 79 and this is where budgetary concerns come in you can see it's got better shielding that's great makes it a little bit more to work with than the cat 6 it's not that much harder it's just a little bit of shielding to peel back but of course if you're doing 200 drops and you need you know 30 40 boxes or more depending on the length and layout of the design you're doing that adds up really quick and becomes a budgetary concern because with the boxes cost roughly more than double right now in August of 2021. Uh, you, if you find a video for me a few years ago talking about why we were still running Cat 5e a number of years ago, some of that had to do with the fact that that was really more budget friendly. And for people that just need basic connectivity and are just gonna run basic office applications and their workstations don't really have a lot of speed dependency, they just need to be connected. Well, you could have years ago gotten away with it. Now you can still, same answer, get away with cat 6 but cat 6a is going to be a little bit better but this is where the confusion comes in as people start saying why not just run everything cat 8 and i've had people leave comments on youtube that say that i'm sorry i don't think that you're running cat 8 everywhere some people say see it's what we settled on we only run cat 8 everywhere one cat 8 500 foot box 339 dollars second cat 8 has a lot more shielding so there's a labor cost that goes up with this cable and it's one of the things that really has to be calculated into a job is the patch panels, the connectors, the little ends and putting them on. Just when you look at the difference between this is a Cat6 cable and the Cat6A cable, you notice there's a large bulkier difference to it. This actually is a more of a challenge than people realize. The challenge is when I have to run 200 drops, you have to calculate the size of these cables. The size of the cables makes a big difference when you're running 200 drops because you have to have a system that can handle the extra bulk. And what I mean by it, like the system is the suspension that you do for the cable, the paths you choose to run when you're building these cabling jobs and the J hooks and everything else that build the support systems to hold these. That all has to be factored in. So it's not just a cost of cable. There's the cost of labor, the cost of the patch panels. And this all just goes into the budgetary concerns. If companies have an unlimited budget to do things, awesome, run the best in cable out there. But it's a scaling issue that goes back and forth. So generally speaking, here in August 21, Cat 6 is still pretty the dominant one you're running, but Cat 6A is pretty popular. But the fact that Cat 6 can do 10 gig over up to 55 meters and you take a normal office, they kind of are future-proofed at least up to 
the 10 gig standard if they even need that standard. And I say if, there's always someone saying you should always install the fastest and there's times when, hey, if the company's budget allows it, we will. But like I said, staying within scope of what's reasonable. So hopefully it's cleared up some of the confusion that comes with what cable goes where and why the DAC cables and SFP cables are still really popular and why they're still probably an even better choice because of the low latency for things that are within the rack. But this is still where you run things. And I'll mention too, people building a new house. Uh, Cat 6 say yeah great if you're doing a new construction for the house but no running fiber all throughout your house is probably still not practical that question is frequently repeated um but you know there, there are some advantages to fiber and i've also talked about those in a couple other videos when i talk about the different modules in comparison and final note yes there will be some future videos for those wondering if these modules are sfp 28 we'll be talking about those in a separate video that's the new 25 gig standard and yes when i review the switch that's part of the reason i have all this because the switch has four 25 gig sfp ports as opposed to just the standard sfp plus 10 gig ports all right I will leave links to the different blog posts that I referenced in here and uh, allow you to dive in to do some further reading, leave questions, comments, concerns below, or head over to forums where you can find me and have a more in-depth discussion. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.